Hey folks, it's Abby from Abby of Pelinor and today I'm going through my best 21 reads of 2021. As we all know, 2021 was um, another hell of a year, <laughs> but I had some absolutely amazing reads in this year and I can't wait to go through them all. I will say that this list is a little over 21 books long. No one is surprised, I will explain when we get there. The way I've kind of categorised these in order is the core pile rating system from G from Book Roast. I use her spreadsheet, or at least I did in 2021, I'm still debating about 2022. This then gives you a score out of 10 that then links to a 5 star rating. Every single book here is a 5 star rating and I have them in order of their points. So I'm going to be checking my phone to go through the exact rating that they got each and go through all of these in order. First up, coming in at 9.86, which is uh, ridiculously high, <laughs> is All Systems Read by Martha Wells, the first book in the Murderbot Diaries. This series is amazing. I've read three books from the series in 2021, all of them are on this list. All of them. I laugh out loud reading them. I read this twice this year. So this is a series which follows an a sentient AI that's kind of taking control over its governor module. It calls itself Murderbot. It's supposed to be like a bodyguard for people. All it wants to do is watch soap operas all day and it has to just protect the humans and it gets really annoyed with them. It's fantastic, it's beautiful, it's very much adult, swearing, violence, etc, but so, so good. I adore this series so much. It became one of my all-time favourites this year from the first time that I read it absolutely fantastic. Then coming in at 9.71 and that is The Mask Falling by Samantha Shannon. This is the fourth book in the Bone Season series which follows Paige Mahoney, a young girl with clairvoyance. She's 17 at the start of the books, so obviously she progresses through, and she's able to dreamwalk and having any form of clairvoyance is illegal in this world by the Scion, the ruling government, and obviously she has this, she ends up in the underground world and things uh, don't go smoothly, because of course they don't, it's fiction. Um, I pre-ordered this, I had like a virtual signing, I got that from, I think it was from Illumicrate, um, and I absolutely adored it so, so much. This was such a fantastic read, I was crying, I was laughing. This series has my heart and soul, Samantha Shannon has my heart and soul, absolutely anything and everything by her will be immediately pre-ordered by myself. Coming in at 9.57, we actually have three books with that rating, so they're just in kind of the order that they were read. Sorry for the camera angle moving slightly, the memory card filled up, <laughs> so I had to go empty all that out. So, where were we? We were at the three 9.57 rated books. So, first up, we have Waistcoats and Weaponry by Gail Carragher. This is the third book in the Finishing School series. This series is set in a steampunk Victorian age and we follow these young girls who are sent off to a supposed finishing school where it actually teaches them how to be spies. And there's a partnership school that teaches young boys how to be evil geniuses. <laughs> this series is absolutely ridiculous. There are supernatural elements like vampires and werewolves, and then we also have really cool steampunk um, mechanicals and things like that. It is so much fun. This series has my entire heart. I just adored this so so much. It's so much fun. Next up for the 9.57s is Sabriel by Garth Nix. This is a series where a young girl has been raised primarily in the normal, non-magical side of the world. It's not like our normal, but non-magical, while her father has been doing his job at, as the abhorson in the magical side of the world. And then she finds out that her father is missing and in danger, and so she crosses into the magical side of the world to help him. His job is to guide people into death. I adore any books that are about death. I love the conversation and the topic around death and how it can be portrayed differently in so many different books. I adore it so much. This, I should have read years ago. Years ago. Uh, this is fantastic. It's one of my favourites. I have already bought the, the sixth book in hardback from Goldsboro, the special signed edition. I don't own two through five yet. Uh, <laughs> so I need to buy them. I loved it so much, so much. I love books about death. 
And then for the last of the 9.57s we have The Cauldron of Life by Caroline Logan. This is the second book in the Four Treasures series, which is a YA fantasy based around Scottish mythology. Caroline Logan is a Scottish author and this is actually published by a small publication house, Cranachan Publishing. This series is so good, I promise if you like YA fantasy you will love this series. I adore the character development within this and the plot progression is fantastic. If you need character based you've got it, if you need plot based you've got it, this has everything. I love this series so much. <laughs> Obviously I can't tell you too much about the second book but in the first one we follow a teenage girl named Elsa and she is basically like a grumpy grandfather sort of vibe and she's really angry and she throws an axe and she ends up becoming a bodyguard for two selkies which are magical Scottish mythological creatures which change from human to seal and back again and she ends up becoming their bodyguard as they're on a quest for the king of the nation. It's so good. It's so good. Then coming in at 9.43 we have Artificial Condition by Martha Wells, the second book in the Murderbot Diaries. I won't go too much into this because obviously I just told you all about All Systems Red but this series is so damn good. This is the one that when I read it in November made me go back and pick up All Systems Red again for the second time this year. Now the next nine books have the same rating which is 9.29 which is ridiculous. This is also where we start to get into the territory of books that I don't own. This next one is because I don't know if I can get a physical edition. This is Forest 404. It's written by Timothy X Attack, acted by Pearl Mackey. It was on NetGalley as an audiobook. That's how I found it. That's how I listened to it. But you can listen to it for free on BBC Sounds as a podcast. You can just use iTunes podcast app, Spotify, and you can listen to it on there. So I don't know if I can own a physical version of this, but it's really damn good. <laughs> this is a sci-fi story set in a futuristic world where humans are augmented and have a lot of mechanical parts within them and we've essentially forgotten about nature. This is all about bringing the recognition of nature back into the public perception. People have forgotten that it even exists, everything's all like concrete and everything, and it's bringing back trees and the sounds of water um, and things like that into public perception and reminding humanity of what it is to be human. I loved it so much. It's so well acted. There's more than just Pearl Mackie, but she does the main character. I promise it is so good. It's so good. I was listening to this when I was walking around the local forest area near my parents' house when I was living with them and it was just beautiful. Next up, another one I don't own, it's The Dawn Chorus, which is the novella in between books three and four in the Bone Season series by Samantha Shannon. Again, I've already mentioned the series, I can't say too much about it, but I love this novella. Um, what I will say is that the series is really action-packed. This novella was a lot slower and we got to have a lot more intimate relations with the characters and see the character development, which I adored. One I do have a physical copy of and that is Skull Degree Pleasant, so I started rereading this series again this year and we know I love this. This is a middle grade book which follows a young girl named Stephanie, she's about 11 or 12 years old, and her uncle dies and at the reading of the will there is a strange man there. She ends up meeting him again in the future and it turns out he is a walking, talking, living skeleton who is a detective who does magic including throwing fireballs. And she delves headfirst into this world. This series is long, as in we're still rereading it now, we're reading one a month, it's going to be going on for a little while longer. I think there's 16-ish books in total, there's like extra little books here and there, and it starts off as a middle grade and very much develops into YA and it's getting towards upper YA now. This series is one of my all-time favourites, as you probably know I have a review video for the series itself separately if you'd like to watch that. This is such a fun series, it has a lot of... see it's Irish humour because Derek Landy is Irish, but British humour. It's very similar. It's not the same but very similar and it has those vibes and it's so much fun to read. There's also so many easter eggs dropped throughout of like references. So for example in the one that I read most recently which is Midnight there's a reference made to the TARDIS. There's references like that all through these books. They're so much fun. One that I've unhauled because I want to get the pretty editions and that is Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lady Taylor. So yes, I had an edition that I wasn't keen on, I got it second hand, and I want to buy those gorgeous new editions, the ones that I'm showing here. 
that's the editions that I want to buy. This series follows a young girl who has one foot in a magical world and one foot in the real world. So she lives a regular life and she is at school, at college for art in Prague. That seems all normal. However, her hair grows blue from her head and that is from a wish that was made on one of her birthdays from this magical side of her world and she thinks that she knows all there is to know about this magical side, all that she needs to know, until one day she goes into one of the rooms that she was told she was never allowed to go into, and this entire world is opened up for her. The character development in this book is so strong, I adored it. It does have romance in, I'm not the biggest fan of romance, I would be fine if the romance wasn't in it at all, but the character building and the world building is so strong that I can overlook that, it's so good and I definitely want to continue with this series. Then we have Manners and Mutiny, the fourth book in the Finishing School series, still at the 9.29. Again, I won't go on about this because I've mentioned it already, this is the final book in the series for the Finishing School one, all of, or most of Gail Carragher's series intertwine, so there are other things like that are separate series but in the same world, so I would like to get to those eventually but this was just such a beautiful ending and it is the first book ever in my life to make me want to go and find fan fiction to go read. I think that's pretty impressive. We're back with Skullduggery again, and this time not a reread, this is the Skullduggery Peasant Grimoire. This came out this year and it is essentially a collection of events and everything that's happened so far in the series. I have my issues with this, it's weird that I'm starting off with issues, but I do. Um, so it's this has come out just before the very last book is going to come out, so it's missing everything from that last book, which seems silly. Uh, the publishing of it was quite rushed, so there's actually mistakes in this edition. And then also th there's mistakes that we don't think that they've realised, so like um, chronological mistakes. It's different from the books we know because he was making mistakes in the books, that's why he's made this. Because the books were getting too long and he was forgetting what, what he'd said happened when. Despite that, and despite the fact that my book came damaged in the mail. This is so good. There is a background story running through here, separate from the kind of recap of the series, which is great by the way, it's a really good recap of everything that happens. I can say that as someone who's been rereading them throughout the entire year and then read this. Good recap, but the story running through it is amazing and I hope beyond hope that this story is included in the final book because it is so good. This extra story that runs through, I would happily read an entire series dedicated to just that story. So I really really hope that it's in the final book, but we'll have to wait and see. Then we have Checkmate by Mallory Blackman. So this is the third book in the Noughts and Crosses series. This is a reread for me, but the last time I read it I was like 11, 12 in middle school, so... <laughs> A reread, but it feels pretty new as well. It's a it's a weird feeling. This series reverses the racial roles, um, having white people in the position of minority and black people in the position of authority. It's an incredibly well crafted series. This book itself was originally published in two thousand and five. It's the third book in the series, so of course the first book was published early two thousands. And I'm so glad that having read this as an adult, having first read this at around eleven years old, it still stands up. It is a fantastic series. I've read, reread the first three. I have Double Cross left on my TBR to reread. It's so good. It is very hard hitting. It's quite graphic. I read them at 11. I was okay. Would I give them to an 11 year old? No. <laughs> so if you are a parent or a guardian or whatever, use your own judgment. If you are that age, compare it to what else you're reading. It's very violent, very realistic violence. Please make a sensible decision for yourself. It's so good. It is so hard hitting. I was weeping. I had to leave. I think I put footage in a, a vlog because I was that like... Oh. Um, I was sat downstairs reading with my dad and I had to go upstairs and read so that I could ball in my bedroom. It's amazing. For the penultimate 9.29, we have That Inevitable Victorian Thing by E.K. Johnston. This was gotten for me by Caitlin from My Cheshire Rabbit as a gift because we both thought the colour was pretty. <laughs> and this is not something I would usually like, but clearly I did. So we are in Canada, uh, don't ask me what year, but it's like kind of an alternative world where the empire still continues to run, but there is a lot more racial equality. And we follow a girl who is the princess set to be queen, 
who is kind of in hiding. She's uh, pretending to be a commoner, a rich commoner, but a commoner. And she is living with some, um, she spends the summer with some girls of her own age. There's a discussion about genetics, there's discussions about consent, there is a lot of like kind of little bits of sci-fi fun in there with this different world, with this different technology. And I was so emotionally invested in these characters and I didn't expect it. Like I said, you've seen what I read, this is a lot more like romance heavy than I would usually pick up, but it's so good. I absolutely adored it. So good. And then the last 9.29 is The Sword of Light by Caroline Logan, the third book in the four treasures novels. <laughs> I'm having a lot of series on here. I won't go into it again. You know, I love it. I'm also running out of space. Now I have five books at 9.14. The first one, An Unkindness of Ghosts by River Solomon. River Solomon is officially one of my absolute favourite authors. Everything I've read by them, I've loved and I really want to read more from them. So I've read The Deep and I've read An Unkindness of Ghosts. I have The Deep here. Yeah. <laughs> Took me a while, still haven't organised these shelves. Their writing is just absolutely fantastic and gorgeous. I adored the full sci-fi elements of this. We follow a young girl named Asta and they are on a spaceship flying through the universe and after they've had to escape Earth. Asta's mother disappeared one day on this ship and they've never seen her since. And so she's been kind of raised by the community and by herself. And Asta is black and she's in the lower decks of this ship and there is a racial hierarchy, white people at the top, black people at the bottom. And basically there is something going on on this ship that no one seems to be paying attention to. But Asta does. There are a lot of heavy topics in this. Um, for example, a lot of the black people are sharecropping, so essentially in slavery. Essentially they're in slavery. Um, and there's a lot of racism. There is a lot of trigger warnings for this one. Um, I always, always put my trigger warnings in the description box at the bottom. If they don't fit, if there's too many books, I put them in an Excel spreadsheet, a Google, what is it called? Google Sheets that I link so that everyone can go see it. Please, if you need trigger warnings, please check them for this because there are a lot. Um, just to name a few, sexual assault, racism. It's a very tough book, but if you don't have issues with those triggers, very worth it. Very well written, absolutely stunning, mm -hmm, it's beautiful. I'm tempted to put it in one of my favourites of all time. Then we have Other Words for Smoke by Sarah Maria Griffin. This is my second book from her and I actually like this one more than Spare and Found Parts, which I didn't expect. So she is an Irish author, I was able to actually get my other copy of her book. Where is it? I need to organise these shelves. But Spare and Found Parts I got signed. Oh, it's there. <laughs> it's behind things, I'm not getting it out. But I was able to get that signed by her in person. And this mystical, magical, tarot, witchy, also discussing the um, treatment of women in Ireland in the past when they were pregnant out of wedlock, also discussing manipulation and abuse, magical, otherworldly, so good. I don't hear enough people talking about this book. It is absolutely fantastic. She is a completely underrated author. She is someone that you should be keeping an eye on. She's fantastic. Then we have a non-fiction, which is The Five by Ali Rubenhold. So this is the lives of the five women who were murdered by Jack the Ripper. And it actually goes into their lives, not their deaths, not related to him. The only thing about him in this book is that he links them all. This goes from their childhood, as much as Rubenhold has been able to research. She's a, a known historian already. She does a lot of in-depth research into this and she goes into their lives, their childhoods, all the way up to near the end of their lives, how they lived, where they were from, and all of the impacts that this had and how it may have led them to where they were when they were murdered. It's such a good book, it's such a good discussion about the kind of condemnation of women in this time, they all kind of decided oh they must have been prostitutes, so we don't need to care. Problematic on two levels. <laughs> First of all, I think one, maybe two of them had ever prostituted themselves, and secondly, why does that matter? So not only are you falsely accusing them of something that you consider to be bad and that you negate upon, but it also shouldn't be a bad thing. If you're willingly doing it and you're happy and you you give your consent, do what you want with your own body. So 
this discusses all of that as well as obviously the historical aspect of their lives, how it could have been different, um, and how a lot of them actually were um, having some really good times in their lives before a shock event happened um, and things like that and it's just basically making these women real. They've been forgotten by history, no one cared, they're just the people murdered by Jack the Ripper and Harley Rubenhold has brought them back to life and made them real women. We've got another reread here and that is The Last Sound of Dead Men by Derek Landy. This is the last book in phase one of Skullduggery Pleasant, so there was a five year gap uh, between this book and the next one. This is essentially like the end of the series. It could have ended here if he'd wanted, but he had more stories to tell. I'm personally enjoying them, but they're not as good. This is just so well done. It's essentially a series finale. Are you surprised? <laughs> and the last book at 9.14 is Road Protocol by Martha Wells. Again, won't go too much into this. This is the third book in the Murderbot Diaries. We love. Now, this is 20 books, and I said 21 in the title, and I said that there's more than 21. That is because the rest of these books are all rated 9 on the dot. So one point lower and they would have been 4 stars, but they're all 5 stars. And I have no way of picking between them. <laughs> so let's, let's just go through them all. Um, again, these are just in chronological order, as all of the ones that have been like the same rating are, so just whichever one I read first. Starting off with The Pale Dreamer, which is a prequel novella to the Bone Season series. This one, again, won't say much about, but it's it's good. It's a good character development to let you know more about the characters before the the actions of the story. Very good. Long Walk to Freedom by Nelson Mandela. I've said it before, I read every single one of these pages in one day, after work, in a call centre. It's so good. It's so good. Mandela is such, was such a beautiful writer and his life story is one that deserves to be written and to be known. I know it's a chunky book. I know that it's intimidating. Trust me. Why do you think I put all the tabs in? I thought I was going to read like two chapters a day. It's so good. It's so good. Playing With Fire by Derek Landy. The second book in the Scholarly Pleasant series. A reread for me. Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. My first ever time reading this and I never thought that this would be a favourite or a book that I would love. It's a classic which I had previously before this year 2021 struggled with but it's also like a contemporary and there's romance. No, I loved it. I adored it. This was so much fun. I loved every second of this book. Pet by Quake Ayamezi. Another author that I love. They are fantastic. I read Freshwater by them and I need to get a physical copy of that because it's absolutely gorgeous. This one is a, a YA, a middle grade. I think it's a lower YA. And um, we follow a girl named Jam and she ends up meeting this creature that comes out of her mum's painting called Pet and Pet tells her that there is a monster in her community. Monsters have apparently been eradicated from this world but it's not quite the case and the monster is impacting her best friend who she loves dearly and so she has to help him. And it goes, it, it, it's just, it's so good, it's so good. I love this book so much, it's such a gorgeous book and I am so excited for the, um, I guess it's a prequel that Quake Mezzi is releasing about Jam's mother. One that I didn't expect to get five stars, but it did. I'm getting out of here, a short story collection in the School of Every Pleasant series. This includes prior to the series starting and like all the way up to the point where this is chronologically in the series. I love kind of the extra background that you get for the characters, the fun little stories. These are all the the silly things that are referenced throughout the books like oh yeah remember that time and you actually get to read about them which is great fun. The Annual Migration of Clouds by Premi Mohammed is one that I read in November and it's gorgeous. It's so beautiful. I listened to this via audiobook from NetGalley and is absolutely stunning. It is a sci-fi novella where they are living, I guess it's more of a dystopian sci-fi, where they're living in this world in the future where it's become very difficult to live on Earth. Uh, some sort of wave went through um, that made it inhabitable, etc. And so she's living kind of on this commune sort of um, style and she gets this letter from a school in one of the cities, the cities that became safe havens, inviting her 
to go and learn there. This is a prestigious thing, but she's also worried about leaving her family and her friends behind and whether it's even the truth because they don't have communications from this school. This is all the discussion about that, about the life that they're living there, about the friendships and the connections between them. It's beautifully written and I can't wait to read more from Premier Mohammed. Then second last is Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. This is about an angel, a devil, working together to try and stop the world from ending despite the fact that they both shouldn't care. It's great. It's great. <laughs> I finally read this because my partner has this copy and we can now watch the show. This is so good. And then my very last five star read of 2021, A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. If you don't know, this follows a Scroogey man, Scrooge, uh, miserly, rude, pinching pennies, all of that, and he is visited by the ghosts of Christmas past, present and future to show him his life and the mistakes he's making to get him to be a better and more charitable person. It's a beautifully written book and it's a classic for a reason. And that's it. These, apart from the ones that I don't own, are all of my five star reads of 2021. And I, I'm guessing you can guess why I couldn't pick one from this. Like, do I pick Pet? Do I pick Long Walk to Freedom? Like, am I supposed to choose? No, you just get them all instead. Let me know down in the comments below, folks, what your favourite book or books of 2021 were, and also let me know if you've read any of these and what you thought of them. I guess technically my favourite book of the year then is All Systems Read by Martha Wells, which is awesome. Um, obviously, we we knew that I loved The Bone Season and the Finishing School series anyway, so Sabriel is another new one. I, I had a really good reading year. A really good reading, yeah. Thank you so much for watching folks. If you'd like to see some more from me and my reading into 2022 then please do hit the subscribe button down below, hit like if you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!